Time for let's hang him. Come on. Yeah. Shut up, all of you. I'm running this trial. Go ahead, dude. You admit, McCall, when you arrived in Deadwood yesterday morning, Marshal Hickok made you his deputy. That's right. Then for no reason you repay his friendship with a bullet. Hickok was no friend of mine. And I had a good reason for everything. <laughs> That's what he says. I warned you to keep your mouth shut. If you had a reason, let him tell it. Keep talking, McCall. All right, I'll talk. But it's not a pretty story. It goes back to the war. Hickok and I were in the same outfit. The 81st Volunteers. We were stationed near my home, waiting for reinforcements, avoiding contact with Confederates. I guess there were a lot like me, born and raised in the South, but serving in the Union Army. Hey, Sarge. Yeah? Better requisition a new horse for the Colonel. By the time I finish polishing this one, there won't be anything left for him to ride. <laughs> I'll get you a medal. Never mind the medal, just give me a new arm. Look, I volunteer to fight for the Union, and what happens? You make a slave out of me. Well, you could write your congressman. Wouldn't do any good, Sarge. Confederates aren't speaking to the McCalls these days. Yeah, I can't say as I blame them. I never have figured out why two rich Southern boys like you two should be fighting on our side anyway. Only one rich Southerner, Sarge. I'm only a poor relation. Bat. Well, your cousin could be smarter than you figure, Bat. You know, there's going to be a lot of rebels wake up and find out their money isn't worth anything once we win this war. My being here has nothing to do with money. Why, no. Haven't you heard, Sarge? He's a man of principles. Hey, looks like you got a couple of wars on your hands, Mr. McCall. Yeah, I reckon I've got a better chance to win this one. On a polished job, I ought to do it. Brent, sir? What's going on here? Maybe they spotted What's happening? You mean the 3rd Battalion is completely outflanked? That's right, sir. A detachment of Rep Cavalry broke through. They're on a prowl behind our lines. Well, that's not so good. 
Republicans. Those Rebs ever spot our position, we're in for trouble. Where are those reinforcements? They should be on their way here to relieve the 3rd Battalion now, sir. Well, we send a man to head them off. Good work, soldier. They left to protect us until our lines are reformed. <clears throat> sir? I know every back trail and shortcut in this part of the country. Well, that's right, sir. McCall grew up around here. His home's just a few miles away. All right, McCall, get ready to leave. I'll have a dispatch ready for you. Yes, sir. Hold back all our advanced patrols. Strengthen our line. Don't stop off for a home-cooked meal, Jack. Look, Pat, there's something I want to say to you. <laughs> Sounds like your last will and testament coming up. In a way, it is. Or maybe it's just a reminder of a debt you owe. You'll never let me forget that, will you? I was speaking of my mother and father. You seem to be the only one who resents all they've done for you. Certainly they don't. They know how much I appreciate everything. I hope so. You may have a chance to prove it. If something happens to me, you'll be all they have left. They'll need you. I'll, uh, I'll remember, Jack. Good luck. Thanks. Ready, sir? Get this through to Major Thompson. Yes, sir. I don't have to tell you how important those reinforcements are to us. I'll do my best, sir. First volunteers. What's your position? The position? We were wiped out. Must be scattered from here to the border. Well, you'd better get back to headquarters. That suits us all right. But where do we find them without bumping into those prowling Rebs again? There, I'll show you. Better make it a good one. We don't know this country too well. Here's hoping the Rebs don't either. Take the little path down to the creek. Yeah. The creek runs into a crossroad. Headquarters is right there. Think you can follow it? Yeah, I think so. Thanks a lot. Keep your eyes open. Your men will all be recommended for citation. Thank you, sir. You all better get out of those uniforms right away. Yes, sir. Company, forward, ho! Major Thompson. Sir, Major Thompson. How far away is it? About five miles, sir. Lead the way, soldier. Somebody! Ho! Thank <laughs> you. 
I still can't understand how they spotted our position without running into one of our patrols. Let us see to the wounded. Colonel, we found this map on the body of a Reb sergeant. Map? Yes, sir. Leading straight to our position. Look on the other side of it, sir. McCall. Yeah, that southern turn. I thought he was too anxious to volunteer. A rebel spy is more useful with a blue uniform. Sorry we were late, sir. You're under arrest, McCall. Arrest? Shut your face. You'll conduct a prisoner to Fort Mason, Sergeant, where you'll await court-martial proceedings. Yes, sir. Marshal, what is he talking about? Even a red spy gets a trial in this man's army. Sarge. Get my squad on the double. 
He's probably heading for home. Huh? Then you can lead the way. almost over with the reading of the charges. Thanks, brother. They wouldn't listen to you at all? The map and the fact that I'm a southerner was all they needed, all they wanted. They had a firing squad picked before I reached the witness stand. What do you do, Jack? They'll be hunting you like an animal. Well, it'll be easier than what both of you will have to face. Things were bad enough when I joined the Union Army. Now both sides think I'm a traitor. You'll be needing this. Thanks, Dad. I still think you should rest here till morning. This would be the first place they'd look. But I had to tell you what really happened. We wouldn't have believed them anyway, Jack. Don't worry about me, Mother. I may have to hide out until after the war is over, but I'll keep in touch with you some way. waste much time in getting here. Let them in, Dad. I'll slip out the back door. You better wait here, Mother. everywhere. We want Zach McCall. You won't find him here. Get out. And Bat, you can get out for good. That's Jack's room up at the head of the stairs. Get out of this house. Take it easy, old man. Stay away from that room. I warn you. Look out, he's going for a gun. That's how they got here so fast. Get out of sight, Sam. Good luck, sir. He's dead. Dead? Well, if they were harboring a rebel spy, you were just doing your duty. I can testify to that. I didn't know. Ah, looks like you just inherited an estate, mister. If, if you think I'd kill my own aunt just so I could take over this place, you... Not you, Bat. Us. We'll discuss that after we take care of your cousin.
war between the states continued, I was a fugitive, a man without a country, fleeing from both northern and southern contingents for fear of being captured and shot. At the same time, I knew I had to follow on the heels of the steady retreat of the Confederate outfit that had ambushed us. I managed to find out that this unit was headed by a Colonel Cornish. I trailed them from one bivouac to another. I felt if I was able to talk to Colonel Cornish, this would lead me to the Southern soldier who could clear my name. cavalry had been demobilized. I was not able to locate Colonel Cornish until I learned that his home was in New Orleans. I'm sorry, McCall. There's nothing I can do for you. The war's over. Are you Colonel? Yes. But not for me. My testimony wouldn't help you. I remember the man bringing the map in. But you'd need his word as to how he got it. Where can I find him? Hasn't there been enough killing? That man was only doing his duty as a soldier, and doing it well. I know that, sir. I'm not looking for revenge. I need him to testify for me. A court-martial sentenced me to death. Surely, Colonel, the honor of a man's name and family is something you can understand. All right, McCall. The man's name is Spargo. I don't care how long you've been looking for me. I'm not interested. I got my own problems. Bartender, me another drink. I'll give you all the whiskey you could handle. Just do as I ask. Look, I told you I'm not interested. There's a thousand dollars in gold waiting for me at home. It's all yours when we get there. A thousand dollars in gold? Just for writing a day and a night. Bartender, give my friend a drink. Mister, you made yourself a deal. you could use some help. My horse is bolted. Oh, that doesn't even make horse sense. What horse is going to leave a beautiful girl like you? That's huh? enough, Spargo. Oh, wait a minute, McCall. I saw her first. I said that's enough. Say, aren't you forgetting something? There's no reason for me to help you out of this fix you're in. I can think of a thousand of them. All gold. Where are you headed for, Mom? Down. I was on my way back from visiting my brother in the army hospital. Do you live in Bentonville? No, I have to catch a stage there. I'll see that you get there without any trouble. Is this all you have? <laughs> Come on, boy. little. It's been a long day. There aren't many men who would have taken the time to help me. Oh, I don't know. Guess the war has changed a lot of things. But I'd like to think people are still the same. A lot more good ones than bad. That's easy for a man to say. Yeah, I guess you had plenty of chance to learn otherwise. Why do you say that? It's a long way to Atlanta.
Traveling alone, it couldn't have been easy. No, it hasn't been easy. Starting tomorrow, we're both going home. You better get some sleep now. Good night, and thanks again. You know what I think? You think exactly what I want you to, Bat. I still say we ought to pull in our horns. After all, we've done well. Why press our luck? Done well? We haven't even started. Look at him. The choice dregs of the war. Are the other men coming tomorrow you'll start for kansas city as soon as they're rested up you make it sound awful easy it is easy when you're holding the pass key to the richest gold field in the dakotas a lot of other men have thought the same thing the indians drove mobs fast as they moved in yeah well they just didn't use their heads see you got to make friends with the sioux why do you think i took that job as marshal of deadwood city because i like being stuck in a little flea-bitten town on the edge of the reservation I got to hand it to you at that, Bill. Making the Indians think you were helping them by driving out the whites. Only the whites who try to get into Painted Valley. I let the others give the Indians a little grief. Just so they'll realize it's not too easy for me. So our gold land is still untouched. Naturally. And when you come along with that gang of cutthroats and all those guns you're going to pick up in Kansas City, I'm helpless. So I have to advise our Indian friends to sell out to you. Sounds simple enough if the government doesn't interfere. Uh, why should they? They gave the Sioux the land, they moved the army out, and with it their authority. But if there's trouble, they might move back. By that time, we'll have all the gold we want. Why are we turning here? It's my home. Jack, stop. Oh. Why? I think perhaps I should go on from here. I don't think I should take the time to stop. Why, you can't save any time that way. Besides, you need some rest. Oh, I must be going. <laughs> Wait, I, I promise I'll get you into town faster than you can do it by yourself. I'll miss the stage. Jack, please, I really can walk from here. Why, it's a good ten miles into town. You'd never make it. Let's get a move on, will you? I got a date with a thousand dollars. Hi, sister, join the fun. Drinks are on the house. Well, look who's coming. It is my innocent little Rosie. Picked any more pockets lately? Let her go. Pull it. Start explaining, mister, and you better make it good. I was only after what's mine. She stole my role in Kansas City. What about it, Rose? Here's your dirty money. And this is the little lady I wasn't good enough to touch, huh? <laughs> What are you men doing here? We were invited by Bat McCall. Where is he? You've got a lot of questions for a stranger, ain't you? Mr. Jack. Mr. Jack. Hello, Sam. Mr. Jack, they all said you was dead. Where are the folks? They's gone. Gone? Where? Killed the night you was here. Sam? Sam? Who are you talking to? Jack. Jack, 
Jack. I thought you were... Murdered like my mother and father? No, no, Jack. You've you got it all wrong. We figured you were a spy. It was my job to go after you. No, no, Jack. No. Who killed him? I don't know, Jack. Here. I don't know. Who killed I don't know. Who killed him? Who killed him? I don't know, Jack. I don't know. All right, mister, you ask. Now, wait a minute. The government's been waiting a long time to hang this man. Turn him over to the U.S. Marshal at Bentonville. I'll be back for you, Bat. Stick with me, Fargo. Just a minute, Mr. Spargo. Let's see, you and I have a little talk, huh? I'd have been a fool to come back without positive evidence to clear me. All I know is you were tried and convicted. Then talk to my witness. He'll prove everything I've said is true. I have talked to him. Bring him in. Hi, I'm McCall. I'm sorry to see you in a spot like this. Spargo, tell him how you got that map from me during the battle. Well, I already have. You met me in the woods and gave me the map, just like we planned. What? What's well, no use, McCall? They know you were a spy, same as I do. They're lying! No! Oh. He's lying, I tell you! All right, Spargo. He's lying! He's lying! He's lying, I tell you! I did my part. It was cheap at twice the price. There'll be plenty more in it for you when the other job is finished. Hmm. When do we leave? At daybreak. We pick up the guns and ammunition in Kansas City and we're on our way. But I've got to see him. We were supposed to have been married tomorrow. The only knot that's going to be tied tomorrow is in the rope around his neck. <laughs> Let me see him. It's not too much to ask. Not at a time like this. Well, okay, okay, but it'll stop your squawking. But just for a minute. Hey, McCall, you can talk to your fiancé for a minute. My fiancé? Ain't that what you... I said open up. Quick. Now get inside. Rose. This just evens up the score. All right, if that's the way you feel. Well, it's all clear now. You better get going. Where would you suggest? Back to the cell the marshal has waiting for me? That's your business. My plans don't call for a fiancé. Neither do mine. I had to make up something, didn't I? You're pretty good at that, aren't you? First you make up a sick brother, then a big home in Atlanta. All right, so they don't exist anymore. What do you expect me to do? Wear a brand on my forehead? 
I'm sorry. I don't blame anyone but myself. It's just that, well, sometimes I guess if a person's desperate enough, they'll, they'll do anything. Yeah, I know. What are we going to do? I've got to go back. What for? Find Bat. You won't find him there. He and Spark were leaving for Kansas City at daybreak. How'd you know? I heard them talking. They're going in to pick up a shipment of guns. So that's how Bat got Spargo to frame me. They're in some kind of a deal together. It looks that way. We'd better get started. We? One town's as good as another to me. Besides, they're my horses. Where'd you get them? I found them in the Marshal stable. Found them? Now I'm a horse thief, too. <laughs> <laughs> they can only hang us once. Well, now all we need to tide us over until we get to Kansas City is a little money. And some clothes? Yeah. After you. Folks, I'm going to have to make a little loan. You, sir? Yes, sir. Come here. Yes, sir. You look like your pocketbook is the fattest. Let's have it. Yes, sir. How much you got in here? Almost $3,000. Good. Then you won't miss a hundred. Thank you, sir. It's all right. Yeah, very attractive. Get your horse. All right, folks, turn around and keep your hands up. Their guns all right. What do you think you're going to do with them? Bat and Spargo aren't going to do anything with them. You're not going to shoot them down, are you? You heard what happened to my folks. You still need Spargo. I'll give him a chance to talk. Wait here. Aren't you loaded yet? Who are you? I work for Bat McCall. He said he wouldn't be here till noon. What's the rush? They'll be loaded on time. That's all I wanted to know. Hey, uh, what kind of trouble are you fellas expecting in Deadwood City anyway? Deadwood City? Why? You got enough shooting iron here to start a private war. It is private. They'll be in this afternoon. Now what? They'll probably rest up at the hotel. I want to be there to welcome them. Joe, check the stuff at the warehouse. One of you men take care of these horses. The rest of you stay close by and keep out of trouble. Come on, Spargo. Get your luggage and check us out. You know where to bring the horses? Yes. Hurry. Come on.
better get some rest, Spago, and see you later. horses.
sorry, Jack. They can only put distance between us. They'll never get away. Good time. I wasn't expecting you for a couple of days. Uh, it's not hard to push men that have got gold fever as bad as these men. Who's that? Him? Oh, he's one of those fools I was telling you about. Tried to dig a little of our gold out of Painted Valley. Bill, I got something to tell you. Oh, there'll be plenty of time to talk. This is important. Later. Bill. Now, look, you boys get your camp set up. Right now, I've got to pay a little visit to my friend Chief Red Cloud. Just let him know I'm still on the job. I'll see you tonight. All right. One white man, I lose six braids. Six men who try to live in peace on land of their fathers. I'm sorry, Red Cloud. I do the best I can, but it's not good enough. This reservation is too large for me to cover by myself. Marshal Hickok, good friend, you try to stop white men. I try, but it's getting worse. Many men arrive in Painted Valley with many guns. Many men? Maybe we get help from Great White Father. No, I, uh, I talked to Great White Father in Washington. He's much too busy with many problems to help the Sioux. You bring bad news of men with guns. Well, it doesn't have to be bad news, Red Cloud. Sell them. Sell them the land they want. Sell? Be paid with our own gold? No. We drive them out. My son. I make treaty with white men. Sue get this land, no make war. I give promise. I keep promise. What about white man's promise? They promise to leave. Now they would destroy us. Not all of them, Gray Eagle. I do not mean our brother. There will be no war. Are these men in Painted Valley then to have their own way? My husband, your father is right. We must make peaceful settlement. That's right. I will try to reason with them. There's enough gold in this valley to make us all rich. Once we get the Indians on the run, the rest is going to be easy. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you men don't know me. I represent the law around here. <laughs> and you men are poaching on Sioux territory, understand? I only came here to represent the Indians to reason with you. <laughs> now, go ahead and unpack your reasons. A few raids. A few more dead redskins, and Chief Red Cloud will be glad to take my advice and sell. Sure got it figured out. It can't miss. Bill, I'm still worried. What about Jack? <laughs> we'll take care of that when we come to it. That's all right for you to say. I tell you he's out to kill me. Well, then maybe you better not hang around here too long. Take the men and go after Grey Eagle. If we get him, the Sioux will quit cold. I'll take care of Cousin Jack.
you're safe now. Grey Eagle, son of Chief Red Cloud, thanks you for his life. Name is McCall, Jack McCall. Now Sue have another white friend in the Dakotas. Another white friend? Until now, Hickok only friend. Wild Bill Hickok? Up here? You know him? Yeah. So does Bat. Where can we find him? Deadwood City. Hick a good marshal. Fight for my people. Didn't seem to do any too well around here. These men just come. They have many guns. Yeah, I know all about that. How does Hickok figure into this? He tried to tell them this Sioux land. They make more trouble. There are too many to handle. The marshal needs help. I can see that. You keep. All Sioux will know, Grey Eagle, your friend. This Hickok, is he a friend of yours? That's what I'm going to find out. Let's go have a talk with Mr. Hickok. I want the truth, Hickok. And I want it now. That's what I gave you. I don't know how your folks are killed. You were there. I saw you. You chased me as far as the river. I don't deny that, but I, I was just doing a job the same as all the other soldiers. Since when has the army resorted to killing innocent men and women? What possible reason would I have for wanting to harm them? I don't know any more about your family's death. I suppose you didn't know Bat was on his way to Deadwood City either. No, I didn't. And every drifter for 500 miles is coming to Deadwood. After that Indian gold, the whole territory is crawling with guns and trouble. I've been fighting that kind of trouble for the past couple of months, fighting for the Sioux. And it's not easy maintaining law and order in a town where there, where there aren't a handful of men you dare turn your back on. But I'm just trying to do a job, same as I did in the Army. If you weren't holding that gun on me, I'd still be doing that job. How? By arresting me? Well, I guess I can't prove anything with words. If you came 500 miles just to kill me, I can't stop you now. I came to get Bat and a man named Spargo. Now, ain't that too bad. Get him up. Thanks, Tom. I'll take it from here. Now, what happens from now on depends on you, mister. I need your help. Yeah? How? You say Bat's got a whole army of men with him. That's more than I can handle alone. If the odds are that great, there isn't much I could do to change them. Maybe not. By yourself. Chief Red Cloud can gather enough braves who'll be willing to fight to defend their land. I want you to go get them. What makes you think I can get Red Cloud to go on the warpath? That necklace will be all the persuading you'll need. Where'd you get it? Gray Eagle. He saved his life a little while ago. Well, then, if I know the Sioux, they'd be willing to do almost anything you ask. Particularly if you tell them you're working for me. Look, I told you, I'm only interested in getting two men. Yeah, Bat and Spargo are mixed up with that gang of cutthroats. Tell you what, I'll do everything I can to help prove that they framed you. Now, what do you say? All right, fine. You go get the Indians and meet me at the head of Painted Valley about dawn. I'll bring what men I can trust from Deadwood with me. Oh, here. You better have this just to, just to make it official. But remember... That badge doesn't give you the right to kill Bat or Spargo without a hearing. I'll worry about getting them first. Come on, Rose. Hickok agrees with me. Believe me, Red Cloud, these men will never leave. They'll slaughter your people unless you drive them out. Let me gather braves, Father. Let me go with white men. You're not breaking a treaty, Red Cloud. It's these men who have broken it. My son, young men like you and old men like me reason with different wisdoms. Who can say which greater, dreams of wisdom and age or fires of youth? Take only enough warriors to show white men our strength. Surprise them, destroy their weapons, make them leave. Make them understand that we want peace. Make ready, my son.
Walter Scott said, and love is the loveliest when embalmed in tears. Looks like that palatial mansion had a library in it, too. You still don't believe me, do you? About my home in Atlanta. You said yourself it doesn't exist. Not anymore. But it was all there once. Stately and fine. I'd like to believe that. Make what you like. But it was there. And it was beautiful. Then what? The war passed through Atlanta. And I crawled out of the ashes. That doesn't matter anymore. You all know your jobs. I'm going to meet the Indians in a couple of hours. What happens from there on is up to you. for the job. You didn't do so well yourself. I told you, there aren't many men in Deadwood I can trust. They're short of rifles, too. That is good. My father wants no bloodshed. Let's hope your father gets his wish. still asleep. Make things that much easier. Remember what I said, McCall. That badge is still no license of murder. Hold your fire till we get inside the camp.
Indian be free. Not only the suits. Get down.
the answer in one bullet. Finish it. Hey, you. Hi, Emma Carl. How many cars, Bill? Hey, Hickok, how many cars? That's the whole story. Now the debt's paid. You men on the jury, go in the other room and bring back a verdict. How about you? How about you? We got our verdict, Judge. No need to waste any more time. He's innocent. Sam. Welcome home, Mr. McCall. Welcome home, Mrs. McCall. 